What is up guys? I am Howie and this is the Go Ride channel where I publish motorcycle videos every week about motorcycles of every flavor, every shape and size. If you find this video interesting, informative or funny, please hit the like button. And if you want more content like this, hit subscribe. If you subscribe to the mindset that why would you have one more when you can have one too many, go ahead and subscribe, but then turn on notifications. And what that's going to do is when I fall off the publishing bandwagon, YouTube will tap you on the shoulder when I finally put something back up. In today's video, we are just going to be doing a quickie about spark plug changes. Now the test mule in this video is the 04 CRF 230F, but the only thing specific to this bike is going to be the gap that I check the spark plug against and the torque at which I install the new spark plug. Everything else is going to be pretty much generic for any kind of piston engine, whether it's the Ducati, my F-150, my wife's Mazda, or this Honda. It doesn't really matter. Some of the stuff that you are going to need to properly change your spark plug is going to be anti-seize, dielectric grease. If you have uh, an exposed spark plug boot like this, boot pullers can be really helpful. If you have coil on plug, they're going to be less helpful. You may need needle nose pliers or picks. That's a whole nother video. Ratchet, extension, and spark plug socket, or a socket that will hold the spark plug. Spark plug sockets are really helpful when you need to position the spark plug down uh, in a valve cover or around a header. On this bike, it doesn't really matter. Spark plug gap tool. Now, a word about these, the little cylindrical ones, not really so good. Um, the tendency that people have is, is they want to slide them on and then torque them to check it. You don't really want to do that because the uh, bottom electrode in the insulator, you don't want to put a ton of pressure on that. I'll show you how to use this in the video. Torque wrench is going to be necessary. Spark plug, gloves, and paper towels. Super handy. The first thing that you need to do when you are going to change your spark plug is see if the manufacturer has anything to say about the temperature of your motor when you change your spark plugs. Now this Honda, it doesn't really matter, but on my 2012 F-150, which has a 3.7 liter, Ford actually says to do the spark plug somewhat warm, which doesn't mean hot, it means warm, just so you don't rip the threads out of the heads. On this bike, doesn't matter. Once you have the vehicle to the temperature that you need to work on it, go ahead and remove the spark plug boot off the old one. This bike, I already pulled it off to check to see what size it is. Uh, sometimes they can fight you a little bit when, and that's when the boot pullers are really helpful. So go ahead and remove the old spark plug. Now, once you have the spark plug out, it's helpful to look at it a little bit and see what you can tell about the condition of the motor. Now this plug is basically fuel fouled. The motor has been running too rich, which I suspect was the result of me not really maintaining the bike before retuning the carburetor. This bike also has a jet kit, which may have something to do with it. The bike may be running a little rich anyway. Some of the other things to look out for are oil fouling. If you have oil fouling, it could indicate bad valve guides or a bad ring seal. If you have me mechanical damage to the plug, that's something you also want to look out for. If the plug is white or very, very light brown, you may be running a little lean. There's plenty of videos out there about how to read your spark plugs, so go find one of them. At this point, before I handle the new spark plug, I'm going to glove up because the oils on your skin can create hot spots on the porcelain. And this is really splitting hairs of me. I told you this video was going to be about the stuff everybody forgets to tell you about changing your spark plugs. So this thing is your spark plug feeler gauge. Each of these wires is a specific thickness and you can check that against the acceptable gap on your plug. Now Honda's plug, I want to say they allow for point, uh, what is it? Point 031 inches to like 038 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at these wires. I've got a 0 0.03, a 0 0.032, a 0 0.035, and a 0 0.040. So that 032 should fit just between the electrode and the ground with minimal interference, and it happens to. But the 050 doesn't fit and there's a little bit of play between the 030. So we know the spark plug is gapped correctly. If you have to adjust the gap on the spark plug, what you do not want to do is push between the electrode and the ground because the ground could be made out of some kind of fancy metal. You want to go ahead and push this in there, which I can't do because it's gapped too tightly. 
you want to go ahead and push this in there and push off of this area surrounding the plug and open it that way. Once you've determined that the spark plug has the correct gap, it's going to be time to go ahead and lubricate the threads. And I'm going to use anti-seize. What that's going to do is that's going to prevent this plug from welding itself into the head. So the next time I go to change it, it's not stuck and I don't rip the threads out. Very, very handy, especially if you have a Ford because they love to weld in. One thing to note though, is the anti-seize is conductive. So if you get anything on the insulator here or the insulator around the ground, you absolutely need to clean it off with alcohol. I don't know how well you guys can see this. I've manually focused the camera, but that's about all the anti-seize that you are gonna need. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the spark plug into the head, being very careful not to cross thread it. Once the plug is in the head, snug up hand tight, I'm gonna go ahead and use a torque wrench to torque it to spec. Once you get really good at this, you don't necessarily need to do this. However, for the sake of the video, I am. The Honda CRF 230F requires a torque of 13 pound feet on the spark plug. That's all it is. Now at this point, if you've seen any of my other videos, you pretty much understand that I preach the benefits of dielectric grease. It's a pretty innocuous silicone based grease, which can be used almost anywhere. Um, but what it's really designed for is electrical connections, one of which is between the spark plug boot and the spark plug. So I like to spread this around inside the boot and on the insulator. It's conductive over really short distances. You need to use dielectric grease. Regular grease will not work in this situation. It may cause misfires. Absolutely do not use anti-seize here. What the dielectric grease is going to do is it's going to prevent the spark plug boot from welding itself onto the spark plug. That's not that really that critical here um, because I could get a boot puller on the spark plug no problem. But when you have plugs down inside the valve covers on certain motors with overhead cams, it becomes a lot more of a chore to take that off and that's going to be really critical in those applications, but it's always good practice. You go ahead and press the boot on and you are done.